of the SANEF Council. She is chairing the Ethics Committee, Subcommittee, Ethics and Diversity, if I'm getting it correct. Um, and of course, um, she has been a journalist herself. She's been in the field. So she's here to talk about things that we, we all know that she has also experienced. And she continues in this life with this life of being a journalist, um, uh, even experiencing more challenges. So she's going to be sharing with us in particular. Um, forgive me, I was just about to get to get it right. The tone of a, uh, what to call a presentation. Okay, she um, she is going to be addressing the gender specific threats against women journalists. Um, and um, I'm I'm not the one to even introduce you to that. Some of you have experienced this yourself. And Monica, the platform is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Hopal. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for, for joining us this morning. Um, this is quite a daunting task. Um, if we look at recent reports that have emerged of the online harassment of women, it's quickly becoming one of the most important press freedom issues globally, not just in South Africa. But if we have to look back a couple of decades, the harassment um, of women began long before online. Um, it began, reports began coming in of women who faced ongoing threats of sexual harassment um, while covering stories. We've looked at issues around marches, around specifically political rallies. Very little had been done from that point. Um, women are very reluctant and have been very reluctant in the past to report these issues to their managers or to report it to HR or to even their direct line manager in terms of the harassment they've been facing on and off the field. Um, it primarily comes from, you know, decades old kind of, um, I suppose, it's just what's generated in the industry where you're required not to say anything and women are often told to toughen up because that's been your approach. If you wanna be in this field, you're gonna to have to toughen up. Um, so for years, many of us have remained silent about these threats because it's part and parcel of the job, right? Suck it up and deal with it. Unfortunately, when social media came about, it is, it's a good and a bad thing. On one hand, it's an excellent tool for journalists. On the other hand, it's proven to be a very toxic place and it's not as it's been, you know, um, pitted as a democ democratic space. Over the last few years, we've seen a rather alarming um, trend in threats specifically against women journalists. Um, here in South Africa, we've seen, for example, um, Pauli van Weyck, who, you know, is a senior, senior investigative journalist working at the Daily Maverick and has done excellent work on reporting on the BBS matter. She has suffered ongoing trolling, threats, death threats, rape threats. That's often come um, globally against women. Um, and if you look at the UN stats on women, just globally, one in three women would face some form of sexual or physical violence in their life. So when things like sexual violence is weaponized in an online threat, it immediately puts women in a state of despair. Um, your mental state takes a huge toll. You're immediately triggered um, by any kind of threat because we also live in a country where we know that gender-based violence is probably amongst the highest in the world. Um, and we find that this is often coming from, and this is a global thing as well, these threats are often coming from populist and authoritative parties. And we look in South Africa, specifically around the EFF, um, there've been notorious cases, there've been several cases uh, specifically from them um, against women. We look at some, some ANC councillors who've also made threats. There's been very little movement um, at all from politicians and political parties to take a stance on this or to make a call, call them out or call out their members on this. Um, another worrying 
a worrying trend I have found in particular is the lack of will from, from newsrooms and from editors to do more to protect their writers or to pre protect female journalists. Female journalists feel, majority of them don't feel that reporting it is going to take it any further. They don't feel like their managers or editors or the newsroom will do much to protect them. There's very little structures in place. Most often people are told to go to, go to HR. Um, this is problematic because most women don't feel like HR is a place for them that's going to protect them. I, I find that in order for us to move forward on this, there needs to be definitive steps taken. They need to show that newsrooms and editors care. They care about your well-being. They care about your mental health. Um, they care enough to back you up and to support you going forward. So if you do, you feel confident enough to say, this is what I've experienced, this is what I've experienced in the field, and that the editor should be able to say, how can we help you? How can we support you? And immediately the thing should be recommending um, psychological and trauma counseling for them. It should be giving them support in terms of how, do, how can we make you feel safe? Not about saying to them, oh, this is what, I, this is what we're gonna give you because this is what we think you need. You need to ask them what they need to make them feel safe. Um, we've done a very snap survey around um, harassment in the workplace, sexual harassment in the workplace which we haven't quite, we're still going through it. Unfortunately, I wish we had more participants who took the survey, but uh, the results are quite startling. Um, more than 50% of the women in that who took that survey say that they face some sort of sexual harassment from people that they work with and from their own colleagues. Uh, they don't feel safe enough to report it. So I doubt that few of them are ever gonna feel safe enough to report the online um, harassment that they face on a daily basis. Um, I think there needs to be stronger measures in place um, to protect women from this, because you're facing, as a woman yourself, you're facing the, the daily fear and terror of you know, just being another victim of gender-based violence in this country. And then when you add another layer of you being a journalist, that just kind of doubles it, if that makes any sense. So. I would suggest that going forward, we need, not just as SNF, but just as editors, we need to have stronger mechanisms in the newsroom. We need to hold workshops in order to, to teach other males and to make women feel safer. We need to reinforce that there is support available to them, that they will not be judged, that they will not be victimized, that you as an editor will do everything in your power to protect them that you will make sure that they feel safe and that you will stand by them and take it as far as it needs to go. Because often they don't want to move ahead with the process. They don't want to go to court or they don't want to um, take it further than that because the entire process itself is just a re-traumatization of what's happened to them. Um, I mean, if you look at, I think one of the most popular cases was of Laura Logan um, during the Arab Springs when she was sexually assaulted and beaten up while covering that. It's terrifying because often, obviously now in COVID, there's no marches and there's no rallies. But before that, it was terrifying because as a woman, covering those events is very scary. There are women who've lodged complaints or spoken about amongst ourselves of being sexually harassed, of being groped, and of being threatened in this. And we just move along with it. We either kind of attached ourselves to a male colleague so that we can feel safe, or we just make sure that what we wear isn't too tight isn't too, too, too revealing because it'll just draw attention to you. Or you try not to ask questions that are not going to I, you know, draw more, more attention to you or have a reason for you to be attacked. Um, so in this, I don't know how we move forward other than creating a more support, a bigger and stronger support base. Um, and that we try and take on the politicians and we have to call them out collectively. We have to do it. Um, I, I find that there's very little reluctance to do it unless it's been reported to SANEF and then there's a statement that goes out. That's the only time that then we wanna call them out. It has to be consistent. We have to consistently remind them that this is not all right. We have to consistently remind them to respect the rights of not only of women, but of journalists. And I think that's fundamental in us making any 
progress on this front. Um, thank you.